Okay, I must deliver because he said you're going to have a surprise. So I bought a bag full of goodies. Okay, let me see what's, uh, what do I have in my bag. Um, for those on online, pity that you can't see as much as they would, but yeah, you'll have to bear with that. Otherwise, you will join us, right, next time. Good morning, everyone. Oh, wow, okay. Never mind. <laughs> it's a good morning, whether you feel it or not. It's a good morning. Every day is a good morning with the Lord. Yeah, every day is a good morning because why? He made it. He made it. When, when because He made it, it's good. That's why the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, every single day when He created heavens and the earth, He said, it is good. So what's the difference? Have, hello? Every day is good. Every day that God gives is good. Can we stop right there and just know that every day that God gives is good? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me unpack my bag of goodies, right? about today. Oh, that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely on the cards for sure. But yes, I am going to speak about the fruit of the Spirit. And notice it's not a plural thing. Let me use the mic. It's not a plural thing. It's the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, a singular, it's the fruit of the Spirit. And Father, I pray that you would just come and speak to me using me as your vessel, as I minister to your holy ones. You made them holy because you've given them your righteousness and your holiness to be clothed with your glory. That's what you have done, not what we have done, so that no one can boast. It's your work, Lord. Now speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I know I'm going to be speaking, but I believe that God will somehow minister to you through me as well. Okay, so I've got a couple of books here. You probably wonder, because I make a lot of notes. Let me see my time. Okay, so number one, I'm going to start by saying let's, let's read the scripture in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 to 23. It's a good place to start. And uh, let's see what the scripture says there. Now, Allow me just to mention this, that Paul is writing to the Galatian church, a church that he loves, a church that he has helped plant and started through the work of the Holy Spirit, and here's Paul, he's, dis he's distressed because of what's happening in the church, because people have come, they are believers, but they're Jews, and they've come, and now suddenly they are forcing the people to be circumcised and saying that Paul has betrayed them and Paul has misled them and you need to be circumcised and you need to follow the full law in order to be a true believer. And Paul's words are literally, who has bewitched you that you are following a gospel that is not the true gospel, not the one that I've delivered to you? And he goes on to say that even if an angel from heaven should come and preach to you a different gospel, may he be eternally damned. Strong words of Paul. And Paul goes into it and defends here. And he literally says that you came into the kingdom of God because of grace and the kindness of God, not because you and I were able to fulfill the requirements of God. We have a champion 
Christ Jesus, who fulfilled the requirements of God. Every letter of the law, Jesus fulfilled. And that's why he is the perfect mediator. He is the perfect lamb of God. And solely through him and through his name alone, there is salvation for everyone who believes. And then Paul says, now it's by the spirit that you were born. It's by the spirit that you have this new life. And so therefore we no longer live like the Gentiles do. With the passions that drives us, we are living by the Spirit of God. We keep in step with the Spirit of God. And he gives in chapter, in, in verse, chapter 5, verse 19, gives a whole list of things of some of the, can I say, the bad fruit that we used to demonstrate when we were in the world. David read it last week. David read it last week. Okay, I'm not going to read it again. I'm, I want to focus on this that I'm going to share with you. And now he says, therefore, here we go. But what the Holy Spirit produces. I love that. But what the Holy Spirit produces is this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these. And those who belong to Christ, that's us, have nailed the passions and desires of the sinful nature to his cross and crucified them. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So, my wife knows, and I, my family knows, that if there's one thing that you can tempt me with is fruit. So, if you want to put little, a smile on my dial, buy me some fruit. And the greater the variety, the better. And so, literally on my birthday, Lynette bought, you name it, gooseberries and, and blueberries. And there was, um, they, I mean, I don't know how she managed to get all of the varieties, but she managed to get, and the wider, the better. Now, I want us to connect some dots today, okay? I want us to, to connect some dots because I believe that there is some dots that God wants us to connect. Are you with me? Stay with me. Are we going somewhere? So, in other words, we're going to explore a little. So, I'm going to start by saying, fruit, have you, ever, have you ever had a closer look at fruit? So when the Holy Spirit comes and says, and the fruit of the Spirit is, he literally, I'm, I, I see him saying, go back and study fruit. Go back and look at the qualities of fruit, natural fruit. Because fruit has got texture, and fruit has got flavor, and each fruit has got, I mean, it's got a, a different design. Um, the, I mean, the skin of each fruit literally is different. It's got its own little protection. The flavor, the way it's designed is uniquely made. The seeds of one fruit to the next. Some seeds like bananas you can't even see with a naked eye. And uh, it's... Uh, yeah, you, you can't see any seeds in here. Maybe it is. I, I don't know. I must go check it out. Okay, there's a lot there is in there. Now, I want to I wanna just quickly run through to you by, by saying, if you, if you wonder what is so significant about fruit, fruit is a powerhouse. Let's go right back to Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord said, I give you every seed-bearing plant and every Fruit as food and as sustenance for you. And the Lord planted, Genesis chapter 2, the Lord planted a, a tree in the east, in the land of Eden, and he called the garden the garden of Eden. And what does he do? He gives mankind every tree, its seed, its fruit, and every plant as sustenance to them. Immediately I want to say to you that the fruit of the Spirit is sustenance for you and me. 
if God has given us natural fruit that is, that is nutrition and sustenance for us, how much more the fruit of the Spirit? Now, one, one of the reasons why I love fruit so much is because of what it contains. Now, I, this is a lecture that you need to go and find yourself because I have been studying and I have been researching fruit for many years. And one of the things that I love about fruit is the fact that fruit contains things, and I'm going to sound like swear words to you this morning maybe. They've got antioxidants. They've got flavonoids. They've got carotenoids. They've got beta carotene and things like that. And the list is endless. Um, I can't mention all of them this morning. But number one, I'm going to ask you, so what is the purpose of fruit having flavor and color and, and, and all these different minerals and vitamins that it contains? Because fruits and vegetables and, and plants are the number one resource of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, flavonoids, carotenoids, beta carotene, etc., etc. So you ask yourself, Come on, man, where are you going with this, brother? What are you talking about? This is foreign to me. You could have might as well have spoken Russian to me. I wouldn't have understood a word. But I want to say to you this morning, I want to say to you what Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1. And let's go there quickly. 2 Peter chapter 1. Right? Because remember, I'm connecting dots here. Listen to this. By his divine power, that's God's divine power, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. By his divine power, by God's divine power, God has given us everything for life and godliness. I'm saying to you, therefore, that there is nothing in life that God has not made adequate provision for. No matter what situation you find yourself in, or I, God has made sure that every single day is adequately provi provided, that every single situation is adequately provided. The only problem is I, and maybe you, but I am short-sighted and I don't get to see because I allow the waves that I'm walking on to steal my gaze so that I don't focus on the author and the perfecter and finisher of my faith. That is the truth. I so easily get distracted by what I experience. I so easily get distracted by emotions around to shout and scream at me instead of looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Amen. So, so God has given us these things. Now, let me tell you this. Minerals, vitamins, flavonoids, carotenoids, beta carotene, antioxidants. Do you know what they were for? They are supposed to fight any possible invasion of infection, disease that comes to your body. Fruit has got agents inside of it that is literally anti cancer fighting agents. So in other words, God has put all the, the powerhouse they've placed inside of fruit, vegetables, and plants in order to keep our bodies healthy. So if you do not get the right amount of, of nutrition that comes from fruit and plants, you are going to suffer and your body is going to potentially have a major deficiency because you are not eating a regular supply of fruit and vegetables and a diet that is loaded with fibers that, and, and, and some of the natural elements that God has placed inside fruit. Why is it? Let's connect that dot. Why is it that when God created the first man and the first woman, their supplement was vegetables? It was plants, it was the leaves, it was the seeds, it was the fruit that came from the garden that God had planted. Now, I don't know how long Adam and Eve lived in the garden. It potentially, they could have lived there for 120 years. I don't know. 
I don't believe they lived there for a week. I don't believe that. I believe they, they lived there long enough to en encounter and experience God face to face. Beautiful. Right? I mean, let's ask myself this question. How long did it take Adam to name all the animals? Not 30 seconds. Not two minutes. I mean, he had to come up with some smart ideas. Maybe he had to delete some of the names. <laughs> you know, that he, ah, no, that doesn't sound so good. No, that doesn't sound so good. I mean, Adam named all the animals, and he engaged with all the animals, and in, in his engagement, he found that there was no one like him. So there was, an, there was literally a period whereby Adam developed some loneliness in the garden because he couldn't find somebody like him. And it was at that stage the Lord made him the best helper he could have had. <laughs> Amen. It was that time that the Lord gave him the best gift that he could have had. The garden was not his best gift. <laughs> it was still coming. Amen. So let's go a little bit further. So God made sure that the first supplement, the first nutrition was fruit, the fruit and the plants that God has given. I want to say to you that that concept you can pull through the entire Bible. Now you know and I know where does fruit come from? From a tree. Where does where does ginger come from? From the plant. Amen. Where does these flowers come from? From a tree or plant. And you may ask me, uh, Andy, what's the significance of this? Almost 100% of all the medication that you are using, no matter what ailment you have, comes from plant extracts. Comes from flowers come from roots, come from fruits, come from the bark of trees, come from the leaf of trees. All of it. All of it. That's why every single time scientists are making a fresh discovery because they discover the amazing wealth that God has placed inside our planet. So if we ask ourselves sometimes, why is it that we suffer so much ailment? You know what? Yes, some of it is possibly that is attack of the enemy. But a large portion is because of our bad nutrition. It's because we don't eat the, the right kind of substance. We eat a substitute. <laughs> huh? Most, much of our food we get on the shelf that has been reproduced and processed. And in order to prolong the shelf life, what do they do? They take out the natural nutrients and they create artificial nutrients made in a laboratory and put it inside there. And guess what? It's a bad substitute for what God has given. I listened to the story of a testimony of a man by the name of Don Lawson many, a number of years ago. And Don Lawson was dying. It was sad for his family and his wife to see Don Lawson dying in front of them. And his wife didn't know what to do. They went to every physician and every doctor they were able to find, but nobody could help Don Lawson. And it's very difficult to see your loved one literally decaying and dying in front of you. It's painful. Week after week, day after day, month after month. And finally, finally his wife decided to go to a church meeting. And at the church meeting, she not only heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, but she met somebody who introduced her to some food supplements, some very special food supplements. And those food supplements was natural food supplements, extracts that they literally took from different types of fruit and vegetables and, and you name it. It was beta-carotene and flavonoids and carotenoids and all of the rest. And literally in, in, in the next couple of days to follow, they saw improvement in his health in his movement, in his muscles, the, the level of pain began to subside and God was literally healing him through the nutrition that he was putting into his body. 
Don Lawson became a follower of Christ and became the leading nutritionist in the United States of America. And Don Lawson helped to start a company, and I, I, I'm not going to mention the name of the company because it's irrelevant, but he helped to start a company and serve this company that literally produces food supplements. Use a good example. <laughs> if you want to eat, um, for instance, if your proteins in your body, your body is made of proteins, the whole body, whether you got it from your skin, whether it's your brain, whether it's your kidneys, whether it's your liver, whatever, the whole body is made up of proteins everywhere. Your muscles, everything functions on proteins. And oh, for a minute there, I lost my train of thought. Um, the building blocks of proteins. I oh think I forgot it again. Just add it now. Um, um, amino acids, right? Amino acids is the building block of that. And, and it was literally through. Now, if you want to get all your amino acids into your body, you have to eat a cow with hair, hide, hooves. <laughs> the works. You don't need nothing. You need to eat every single part in order to get the best nutrition for your body in terms of protein build up. But do we do that? Never seen somebody eat a hide of a cow. You know, all the horns, all the hooves. Maybe the dogs does. But, and, and that's what we do. You know what we do is, we take all of that stuff, they cook it and they, um, they, they literally grind it to a fine powder and turn it into bone meal and they feed it to the animals. And so the animal gets the best part. Or gets, at least they get some health and nutrition that we don't get to have. So here we go. We got fruit, but fruit comes from trees. You know what? It's amazing how the Lord sees you and me as trees. Hello, trees. Shake a leaf. Say good morning. And I'm going to just mention two scriptures. And I want you, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting dots for you this morning because I want to make you curious. I want you to become curious to say, God, so when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, you literally saying to me, I want you to go on an exploration journey. I want you to explore. I want you to run through the scriptures and say, what is the meaning of this? Where, why are you bringing this to my attention? Okay, so here we go. Psalm 92. Oh man, that, sound, that psalm is loaded. And I unfortunately do not have the time to give justice to this amazing psalm. Psalm 34 that we read this morning. Ooh, my word, I could just spend time in that psalm alone. But let me read to you just a section of Psalm 92. And then we're going to go to Isaiah 61 quickly. All right. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and will grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. 92.12, okay? So, uh, Psalm, chapter 92, verse 12. So, I'm going to read that again. But the godly, the righteous, those who place their faith in God as their Savior and as their Redeemer, they are called the godly, nobody else. So, if you've done that, you are the godly, okay? Not because you are godly in yourself, because God has placed his godliness inside of you. His righteousness, his holiness, his perfection. You are clothed with Christ. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Now, if you have, I mean, you must go see pictures of the Lebanon, the Lebanese cedars. That was the King Haram. When Solomon was building the temple, he was floating it down the Mediterranean all the way to Joppa so that they can go and collect it. These are massive trees. I mean, the diameter of one of these trees could easily be from here to the sound desk. I'm not lying. It's massive trees. It's like the, the massive red wood trees in, 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 in California and America. It is huge. You can literally drive a car through it. Right, my brother? You can drive. I mean, there's, um, there's tunnels where they literally drive cars right through. Some trees are massive. So 
So, so why does God refer to us as trees planted by him? Because trees are secure. Storms come, storms go. Trees just remain. Some of these trees are literally hundreds, 500. Some of those redwood trees are literally like thousands of years old. A few thousand. I mean, like you ask yourself, how is that? Because when God plants you, you are in a secure place. When God plants you, he makes sure that you are rooted. You are firmly anchored because you're anchored and rooted in him, in his, on his promises, which is yes and amen. That's another sermon. I'm going to go there. Okay. Listen to what he says. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. You can literally say they are transplanted into his presence. Listen to that one. Listen to the next one. Even in the, and, and they will flourish in the courts of our God. That's you and me. God says, I want you to flourish in my call. I want you to be like trees, flourishing. Now, what does the flourishing look like? The flourishing looks like this. Psalm 1. A righteous man, a righteous woman, does not sit in the counsel of the wicked. Right? He's planted where? By streams of living water. Who is that streams of living water? Jesus is and God is the stream of living water. That's why Paul could literally say, when, 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 when Moses struck the rock at Meribah, it was Jesus. He was the rock that was struck because he is the fountain of life. That's why the woman at the well, he says, I am the one who gives living water. I am the well that you should come to. I am the source. So God wants us as trees planted by him, planted in his presence to flourish because we planted at the stream, Jesus, the stream of life. And we produce leaves that does not wither. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a we, we're living on a green planet. If we, if we, if we have enough scientists to go, just go and look at the powerhouse that is inside leaves. I'm not just talking about curry leaves and bay leaves, you know, and like, you know, it's nice, it's good. But there's so much more to it. Because leaves are the powerhouse. The there's a tree called, um, go on, then, let me not, that's a commercial break. Let me not go for commercials right now. <laughs> Just leave it for now. Otherwise, I will go on a white good chase. Listen to this. Even in the old age, they will produce fruit. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter how old you are. If God decides that you are planted in him, you will be fruitful. You will flourish. And others will see it. Others will see it. Quickly, just think about what he said to Nebuchadnezzar, Genesis chapter 4. God sees Nebuchadnezzar as a massive tree that fills the entire earth. If God could see Nebuchadnezzar as a tree that, that fills the earth, where every plant and every person and every bird and every animal could find shelter under that. How much more those that are planted in Christ Jesus? How much more can the, the nations of the world find shelter under those that are planted in Christ Jesus? And the scripture says there that all animals and humans and birds found their nourishment from that tree, Nebuchadnezzar. How much more does God desire to bless the nations through you and me who planted in Christ Jesus? How much more does God want our fruit, the fruit of the Spirit of Christ Jesus in us to bless the nations of the world? Sure, I feel this is like a, okay. Oh man, my time is up. I'm only starting. There's so much more to say. Yeah. Okay, let me just let's quote a couple of scriptures quickly. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 22, 17, 22. So we're talking about, let's talk about the fruit of the Spirit quickly. But 
It says there, a joyful heart. Joy in your heart is good medicine. Didn't I just speak about fruit containing flavonoids and carotenoids and that? That is good medicine for our natural bodies. Now Jesus says, joy is good medicine. Joy is good medicine. Have joy. Joy that overflows because sadness, you can literally translate sadness into anxiety, depression, stress. People die and develop cancer and other diseases because they worry and they're concerned. Jesus says, why are you worrying about tomorrow? Why are you worrying about what you're going to wear? Why do you worry about what you're going to eat? Why do you worry? Why do you worry? Why do you worry? Cast all your concerns on me because I care for you. Because I have provided everything for your life, whatever you might need in life. I've even provided everything for you for godliness, for living the godly life. Okay. I'm going to have to finish. But, oh my word, <laughs> I don't know, just, I wish I could just continue. <laughs> uh, but the godly will flourish. Do you mind if I just go quickly with you to um, Isaiah 61? Just as another reminder, you're going to have to continue to study um, those scriptures on your own. That's your homework. You need homework. It's good. Right? Psalm 61, um, um, Isaiah 61, and I'm going to read from verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. That's me. And the Spirit of the Sovereign is upon you. And the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon Christ. Because the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that quickened His body, now lives inside you and me. That same Spirit. It is by that Spirit it is the presence of the Holy Spirit that produces the fruit of the Spirit. It's the evidence that Holy Spirit indwells you and me. That is why we have the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon you. You have to acknowledge that. Amen. I acknowledge that. Even, even when I get it wrong, I recognize I have the Holy Spirit. Because you know why? Because that is why I can come to the conclusion that was wrong. I need to repent. I need to, I need to go on my knees and ask God to forgive me. Why? Holy Spirit inside of me is convicting me and of sin and of righteousness and of holiness. Right there and there. And I can go and just say, I'm sorry. On my own, I'm reckless. Without Christ, I'm crude. Without Jesus, I have no self-control. I, I, I will not repent. I will not change my mind. I will not show remorse, but because of the Spirit of God living inside of me, I can have a tenderness. Holy Spirit speaking to me, challenging me, equipping me. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. That's our job. You know what that is? That's goodness right there into action. You talk about the fruit of the Spirit there? Right there, there's goodness. Because those in Christ Jesus does good works. Ephesians 2.10, which God has, has provided and set apart and ordained for us to do before the foundations of the earth. The Prime Minister of India once said this. I'm talking now about a decade ago. So I'm quoting something that happened about 10 years ago. He said this. We, as the Indian government, and I'm paraphrasing, okay, are acting stupid because we have a campaign against a group of people in our nation that are literally providing 90% of all social and humanitarian work, and we are fighting against them the Christian church in India is doing things that the government of India cannot do. And we are treating them as the enemy. God is performing good works throughout the earth through the body of Christ. 
the fruit of the Spirit, of which good works and goodness and godliness is part of it, is literally transforming society. I'm, just, I'm going to end with this testimony quickly. Well, let, me, let me finish the scripture and I'll end with this testimony. A joyful blessing instead of mourning. Okay, to those who mourn in Israel, to those who mourn in Israel, I will give a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Joy instead of mourning. Festival praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks, for the Lord has planted them for his own glory. Jesus said this, my food is to do the will of my Father. My food is to do the will of my Father. That's the good works I want to do. Is that our food? Do we get sustained? Do we feel that the sustenance inside of us is to literally allow his kingdom to come? My passion is to get out there and do the works that God wants me to do. Is that what wakes me up in the morning? That stirs our hearts? Jesus said, John 15, I am the gardener. My father is the gardener and I am the true vine. He prunes every single branch in me so that they can produce fruit. Eventually he goes on to say, it is the desire of Father that you will produce glorious fruit. Fruit in abundance. Fruit that will bring glory to the Father. God's desire for you and I is that we will produce amazing fruit. Fruit that will literally feed the nations. Fruit that will transform the nations. When the righteous flourish a city rejoices. When a righteous flourishes under the presence of God's Holy Spirit, a nation is transformed. Society is conformed and transformed. Wholeness comes. Healing comes. The fruit of the Spirit is the powerhouse in the body of Christ. It is so powerful. The Spirit of God is the essence, it's the, it's the evidence, Holy Spirit is here, I'm producing fruit, I'm a tree, I'm flourishing. It's very interesting how Revelation chapter 21 ends and starts in Revelation chapter 22 with trees planted next to a river that flows from the throne of God, producing fruit in every of the 12 months of the year, and their leaves are used for the healing of the nations. I'm asking, is that a tree or is it us? It's us. We are like that. We are the spiritual Eden of God. We are the, are the Eden that God has planted that's supposed to produce the fruit so that nations and people can be healed. There is only one healing. It's found in Christ. And the, and the healing is through you and me. A healing comes through you and me. I have to end. Quick. Tonga, an island nation, small, in South Pacific. A nation, a people, that ate their enemies because they would get the spirit and the strength and whatever they have of their enemy as they ate them. And as trophies, they would literally bring the heads of their, of their enemies home as proof how many they have killed. And they will heap up their heads, create a little mountain. And God in his mercy, send someone to the nation of Tonga. Not just someone. They ate the missionaries. They ate them. They consumed them. For them, it was a delight that they could have them and eat them because they saw them as the enemy. But God just kept sending them and sending them for the blood of the martyrs are the seed bed 
of a new church. And out of the pain and out of the sacrifice of others who have died, God transformed the nation of Tonga. A people who literally was transformed by the patient endurance. And that's a sermon I'm going to have to preach on another time. Because God wants us the fruit of the Spirit, patient endurance, patience in suffering. Good story. Go to Joseph. Joseph went through patient endurance, patient suffering. In his pain, God taught him to trust in the unfallible promises of him. That's why I love that song in, in, in Joseph, Prince of Dreams. You know better than I. You know the way I let go of the need to know why. Because you know better than I. When you and I have to endure some trials, we know this, that God, your good God, has not abandoned you. He's producing fruit inside of you that I cannot imagine. The island people of Tonga went and they evangelized the South Sea Pacific. And they went to New Caledonia and they went to Tahiti and they went to Fiji and they went to New Zealand and they went to Papua New Guinea and, they, and it was because of them that the gospel reached those places and transformed those nations. The fruit of the Spirit is the powerhouse of the Holy Spirit working inside His church, wanting to feed the nations, wanting to transform societies. I will need you to go and spend time, look at the scriptures, ask Holy Spirit to open things up for you because my time is up. The sermon is not finished, <laughs> but my time is up and I need to go. And we're going to baptize people right now. Okay, so Lord, I pray right now as we stand in your presence, we are planted in your presence. We are your oaks of righteousness. We are literally planted by you. You want us to flourish by the streams of living water. You want us to produce amazing fruit, fruit that will lead to the Father's glory. Even as Ephesians 5 says that it's the fruit of light. It's amazing. Thank you, Lord, that we have this fruit of light shining in and through us. I pray that it will transform our communities and societies and our homes. Lord, I pray that you will help us. We need to cultivate this fruit. I haven't even spoken about that, Lord. We need to cultivate that fruit. Help us to cultivate it by being obedient, by spending time with you, by willing to, 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 to go in repentance where we need to go in repentance. We humble ourselves before you because through repentance, it produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Help us to have that kind of attitude. Thank you that Holy Spirit is working inside of us, transforming us from one degree of glory to the next so that Christ can be seen in us. In Jesus' name, amen.